Hey, what's up? It's Daniel McLaughlin and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different, but it's something I'm pretty excited about. Uh, we're going to do a little studio tour. This week, I'm actually working on a course and it has to do with pedal boards. So look forward to that. But anyway, a quick note on the gear in here, because this is all gear that I use to make music. These are all tools and that's first and foremost, my tools to make music. A lot of the stuff in here is nice. It's been years and years of collecting, buying, selling, trading, uh, that's led to the collection that I have now. I approach buying and selling gear in a way that doesn't depreciate the value of anything. So I try and buy as close to where I can sell. I'm usually buying used, I'm trading up. There's not a lot of equity lost in buying and selling gear for me. Sometimes I'll even make money on a gear trade. But anyway, this is not like a collection or like a means to be excessive in any way. These are the tools that I use on the daily in my life as a professional musician. So I'm ready to get into it. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button before we start this video and let's check out the studio. All right, here we are. We're going handheld. The first thing we'll start with is this amp wall over here. Now this has been in the backdrop of a few videos. Uh, these are my amps. These are kind of my amps that I use to gig. They'll be the amps that I record. Uh, first off down here, Tone King Imperial. This is the Mark One. I. I think this is a 2014 model. Uh, wonderful amp. Probably the best clean tone I've ever heard. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Love the tremolo on that too. Obviously the Filmo sound. Uh, I made a video about this. Um, Bill Crenard modification. Then we've got the cabinet here. This is a. Uh, this is actually formerly an Ampeg G115 and there's a JBL K130 speaker in there. Um, it was actually a not working, the amp wasn't working inside. So I actually pulled out all the guts. I put new amp Tolex on there and then uh, wired it up in the back to be just an external cabinet. And it sounds great with the projector amp. In between there, we've got the Alex's attenuator. Now this is just a simple attenuator. There was this guy named Alex on the gear page who was selling these. People were kind of going nuts over them. I found this on Reverb Used and it's been a great attenuator, although <laughs> this is switched. So on means off, off means on, but great. Obviously I've got my Strymon pedals up here. Um, this I haven't really spoken too much about. This is a Kalamazoo Model 2 and I might make a video about this at some point. Probably one of the most beautiful tremolos you can get, but it's really activated when you play it with another amp, when you have like a stereo tremolo thing going. This is just a little practice amp. It's actually from 1965. And kind of a little secret is this is like one of Blake Mills's favorite amps of all time. He gets it kind of modified just like he gets the uh, Filmo sounds modified. But you'll see him like even in, in his new uh, song that he did with Pino Palladino, he's using two of these at Sound City. And we got the Matchless HC30R, that means reverb. Um, that's a 2019 and then the cabinet is actually what, 26 years older than, than the head? Doesn't really look like it, huh? The, the cabinet is a 1995, making it a Samson era, which I guess increases their resale value, I guess. Um, unfortunately, those are two uh, greenback cabinets in the back. Normally, the cabinets that they sell now have kind of like this crisscross uh, speaker setup. I don't know what they are specifically, but Still a great cabinet, still sounds great. It's pretty lightweight too, and it's four ohms, which is nice. Oxbox, we love the Oxbox. We got my cables, tons and tons of cables. I really like Mogami cables. I usually try and buy those when I can. Um, and then my red tape kind of demarcates that they're mine. Um, this is my acoustic treatment. I actually built eight of these out of just a pack of rock wool that I bought from Home Depot. Um, they're not wrapped in anything special. That's just like normal fabric store fabric. Uh, you can get Guilford of Maine fabric. If you're thinking about building these, it's kind of expensive, but it actually has some acoustic qualities to it, like some acoustic absorptive qualities. That would probably be the way to go if you really wanted to go like heavy on these guys. But overall, these cost me, I think like 150 bucks to make. And I got eight of them, obviously. Um, Cool, let's talk about these. The ukulele, mandolin, I, I have done some sessions with those, um, not too frequently though. They're just there because, you know, they're small, they look good. That little foam is there to cut down on, uh, that has a lot of sympathetic resonance. So 
stick that little piece of foam in there. Let's talk about the desk. All right, so this is obviously what we see behind the, uh, that's like the backdrop of a lot of my videos. So this is actually a Husky workbench. It uh, It's 62 inches. I just got it used actually a couple weeks ago. What's nice about it is it's a um, adjustable height. So my last desk, kind of the angled one, was way too low for me. I'm a tall guy, I'm six foot three, and I needed something a little bit higher because my knees were getting crushed. It was also tough because I felt like there wasn't a whole lot of space on that desk because I had the keyboard on it. Now, I actually can just pull this out. This is a Z-braced stand, which is kind of cool. At one point, I really wanted that uh, platform output desk. That would have been really cool, but there's like an 18 month waiting time on that. And I just, I can't deal with that. that and they're kind of expensive. This whole thing ended up costing me like 300 bucks, which is nice. So this is an M Audio Axiom 61, and it's just a real cheap uh, MIDI controller, but it's so solid. I've loved this thing. I've had it for like 10 years. You've got these uh, velocity pads, you've got a transport, you've got MIDI control parameters, you've got all these wheels, 61 keys. Great, great keyboard. I think the Pro is also really great, the Axiom Pro. So the monitors, the, the two uh, uh, studio monitors up there, those are Genelec 8030Cs. I've always loved Genelec monitors. I think they're some of the best out there. Those are like the Neumanns are really good, but I've always loved Genelecs. They're in a lot of the studios that I've kind of worked in over the last couple of years. Um, and the cool thing is, is they mount to mic stands. You can uh, mount those just to some simple tripod mount uh, mic stands, or those are cast iron based mic stands. So they have a lot smaller of a footprint than like traditional um, studio monitors because they're just small like that. They're stealth, which is cool. So it's all based around a 13 inch MacBook Pro that kind of hides behind there. That's a spec'd out MacBook Pro. Uh, and then Henge Docs makes that. That company is now known as Bridge. They got bought out, but it's a cool little aesthetic way to stand up your MacBook Pro. And then just have the simple Thunderbolt out that comes over into these two guys. So we have the Cal Digit uh, Thunderbolt 3 Dock. That connects everything that isn't audio gear. Well, I guess it connects my, um, my MIDI controller, but that really allows a lot of the MacBook Pro functionality to come out with the four Thunderbolt docks, which is really nice. Uh, and then we've got a Universal Audio Octo Satellite. These are like my favorite hard drives of all time. That's a SanDisk Extreme Pro. It's a two terabyte and it's got like, the, the read speeds are like one gigabyte per second, which is insane. So I have all my samples on that hard drive right there. Going down below, there's my interface. I put a light down there so that you can see it. Uh, that's just a 2U rack. Uh, it's meant to be grab and go. So if I wanted to, I could disconnect everything and I could grab that rack and I could go and I could set up in a little space. I've got six inputs. That's a Universal Audio Apollo X6. I'm a big fan of the Universal Audio stuff as you've seen with my uh, Oxbox videos. That's a Furman power conditioner. Um, Plugged into there is the interface, and then I've got the satellite and the monitors, as well as the Kemper. So the Kemper lives over here, mainly because I use the rig manager software to control it. So I'll just plug into that, and then I'll just control everything from my computer. And that's always plugged into my interface, as is that little cloud lifter back there, and then the direct box. I always try and keep as much plugged into the interface that I can. So the aux box is also plugged in. These light bulbs, as well as the overhead lights are hue bulbs. So I kind of control them with my iPhone. I don't have like the hue bridge or anything like that. It was a little complex to set up. So I just control it all with my iPhone, which is like a very minor inconvenience, but whatever. So let's check out the guitar. So we've seen this guitar corner quite a bit. It's actually a producer's choice blanket behind there. It's just meant to cut down on acoustics. It doesn't do a great job, but it's fine. It's supposed to be fireproof. It's better than a wall. This is actually a square room that we're in right now. So having like a corner treated like that is helpful. This is a 61 Fender Custom Shop Wildwood 10 Stratocaster. This is a 52 Custom Shop Tele Heavy Relic. I love just like 
nasty, nasty looking tellies. I always kind of thought, if I'm gonna get a butterscotch telly, it just looks like it needs to be dragged behind a, a truck. <laughs> and this one does look like that, which is cool. And then this is a beautiful Gibson Les Paul. It's an R8 Wildwood Featherweight. It's eight pounds, 8.1 pounds, which is insane. It's, it's not chambered at all. My, uh, my former professor and someone who I consider a good friend now, uh, Steve Travato, owned this before me. And then before that was this guy named Johnny Stichella, who plays for the Almond Betts Band. Really amazing slide player. But that has a really chunky neck. It's got this cool bleed that happens on the binding right here. Beautiful guitar. Down here, that's a Fender uh, 7 guitar boat. It's actually made with uh, a G&G &G case, which is cool with that, all that uh, velvet, the crushed velvet. And then these two are, uh, those are Moody straps. I got two Moody straps that fit with all the guitars, which is cool. Um, this is my arch top. You've seen it in the Christmas video. That's a Whitmore Kalamazoo uh, 165C. Callings OM1. There's a Cremona Rosa Morena nylon string, kind of a cheapy nylon string. This is my baritone guitar that I built myself, the sparkly one. Uh, I'll talk about that in a video at some point. Gibson Les, or Gibson ES339. Probably my favorite bass of all time, Fender Mustang bass. And then a Gretsch six string banjo, also known as a banjitar or a gitjo. I think these have actually gone up in value quite a bit over the last couple of years. Uh, it gets a pretty good banjo sound. I wouldn't say it's fully there. You got to really kind of finesse it in, in an interesting way. Um, but cool to play nonetheless. This is a picture. Here, I'll get this out of the way. This is a picture of Nile Rogers uh, Hitmaker Stratocaster that a buddy of my Mason Stoops drew for the Black Lives Matter movement earlier in the quarantine. It's a very cool picture. I'm really happy that I own it. Yeah, I got it because uh, because I have a 61 style Strat. So that's a that's a 1960, 1961 Stratocaster right there. So, kind of a boring thing. Let's not talk about it, I'm just joking. Uh, this is a 1960-something. I'm not totally sure. I kind of forget. It's from the 60s. It's a Wurlitzer 200. It was restored by Vintage Vibe. What I love about it is it makes sound even though it's not turned on. Um, when it is turned on, it's got this really great... Uh, it's tough to play piano while you're filming, but it's got this great vibrato which is really awesome. Uh, this is really fun to put into tracks. It sounds great going through effects or like through pedals. It's very like 70s, 80s sounding. Um, I always try and incorporate it when I can. All right, moving along, we got kind of the start of all the junk here, but it's stuff, you know? Back here, this corner is where I put all the mic stands and stuff when I'm not using them. That is actually a real heavy duty onstage stands thing. I remember when I bought it, it was like 120 bucks, but it, it is, I've had it for like 10 years, big, huge cast iron bottom. It's, it's worth it to have really solid mic stands. Some of my favorites are Atlas stands and uh, Triad Orbit is obviously really great. If I could, I'd have all Triad Orbit, honestly, <laughs> but this is a really great stand too. It's worth it to invest in things like mic stands um, because they'll hold up and then they won't crash your thousand dollar microphone on the floor but yeah as we keep going on peterson strobe tuner some camera batteries here's some extra hard drives gaffer tape this is an ableton push let's get this out of here. this thing's a lot of fun when i've got it set up i don't really have it set up all the time uh i wish i knew more about it honestly it's kind of tricky to use sometimes but when you get into the flow it's really cool this is a Teenage Engineering OP-1, another really fun thing. I like to take that with me if I'm ever going places because it's just like such a cool tool. All right, pedals. I'm sure you guys can make out a few of, the, a few of these pedals. Some standouts. We got the JHS color box. 
exotic wah. This is a um, Analog Man by Chorus. Very cool Mr. Black vintage ensemble right there. Stereo vintage, insane production tool. Everybody should have that. Analog Man King its own. Just had that rehoused by uh, Analog Mike. They have just such great customer service at Analog Man. Sonic Research Turbo Tuner, probably the best value in a tuner pedal. That's 130 bucks and it's the most accurate tuner on the market. Just some random picks, some uh, capos, slides. This is kind of fun back here. You'd think these are just picks, but they're actually really nice high-end picks. They're like things like um, Fender True Shells, Blue Chips, Red Bears. Put these away in a sec. V picks, some random ones like this one, I think is like a glass. Um, Wiegands. Any kind of casein pick that I find, a lot of acrylics. I put them all into the box and then I just try my best to not lose the box, <laughs> you know? You don't wanna lose picks like that. Those are expensive. So we keep moving on. I kind of laid out a few of my microphones that I've got. That's my camera bag that, right there. Um, obviously the SM57, SM58, major combo to have. Um, extra headphones, there's a big box of strings down there with some Pencils, pens, screws, right on top. That's where I keep my SM7B. Here are the mics. So I've got a couple Neumanns. Um, that's a Neumann TLM-103 with the added shock mount. Um, these are Neumann KM-184s. It's a stereo matched pair. And then uh, this is the cool Townsend Labs L22 Sphere modeling microphone. This is a very cool microphone. I wish I could use it more on people. I haven't been seeing people. I use that on my acoustic guitar though, and it sounds really great. It's really fun to scroll through all the uh, all the different microphones. So that's that stuff. Let's check out what's in here. So there's a reason why I closed it off. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty gnarly in here. There's just a lot of a lot of junk, a lot of books, a lot of extra cables, boxes up there. There's my light. Um, but yeah, just a lot of stuff. Same thing on the other side here. Um, road cases, cases for my guitars, stools, got some kind of quirky stuff. I've got that toy piano up there. Um, you know, WD-40, Deoxit, Lithium Grease for the Wurlitzer, some extra kind of broken pedals. Yeah. So as we move on from there, we can kind of look at the film stuff. It's kind of my film rig here. Um, everything that I record for my videos is usually on this SM7B. Um, and then I've got this little um, teleprompter set up. I'm not always using a teleprompter. Sometimes that shows a picture of me. It's just a little bit easier to talk to, but sometimes if I've got like stuff I want to really talk about and really nail, I'll use the teleprompter and a little screen. The uh, the camera there is a Sony A6400 with a Sigma 16 millimeter f f1.4 lens. I almost said it all right. <laughs> but if we cut over here, check it out. I'm looking at you, I'm looking at the monitor, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at the monitor, I'm looking at my camera. Cool. And then got a big old light um, softbox, real, real cheap. Um, <laughs> A light stand, but you know, gets it done. And then the last thing I'd say behind this door is a bathroom. And then what is a shower good for outside of storing your guitar cases? So that's the studio. Thanks for checking it out. Here's this chair. Chairs are Herman Miller. Oh, there we go. The chair is a Herman Miller Aeron chair. Um, Pick these up used, they're such good chairs. They're expensive when you buy them new, but buy them used. This thing's like 20 years old. And I took the armrest off, so that's the move. All right, thanks so much for watching the video. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, let me know if I glanced over anything. Uh, I've been working here so long that it's just like, all of it's just second nature to me. So it wouldn't surprise me if I skipped over anything. Thanks for making it to the end. I'll see you guys next week.